Good day, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tina, the product manager at Rocker, and I'm honored to be your speaker today. Thank you all for joining us as we discuss the new gold standard for EV isolation. Today, I am to help you better understand the EV and the isolation techniques. Here is a brief overview of our session. First, we will introduce EV and explore the most commonly used EV isolation techniques. After that, we will have a Q&A session where I will address your questions. Please feel free to leave your questions in the chat during the webinar. As EVs have gained a significant attention for their crucial role in pathways related to aging, cancer, and numerous diseases. Um, common questions I have often been asked include, um, what's the difference between EVs and exosomes? And um, what's the best method for EV isolation? Today, we will clarify these distinctions, delve into EV subtypes, and discuss why proper isolation is essential for reliable downstream applications. So let's get started. Extracellular vesicles, EVs. They are lipid by their enclosed nanoparticles that are naturally secrete by almost all living cells. They carry proteins, RNA, DNA, and lipids, delivering them to the recipient cells, influencing their behavior and function. Thus, EVs are pivotal in intercellular communication, impacting both physiological and pathological processes. And this has sparked huge interest in EV research in the scientific community. According to the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles, ISEV, EVs are classified into three subtypes based on their biogenesis. First, exosomes. They are the smallest subtype ranging from 40 to 120 nanometer. And they are primarily formed through an endocytic pathway and carry endosome associate protein, like Alex, TSG101, and well known tetra spinning markers, including CD9, CD63, and CD81. Then, microvesicles, MVs. They are larger EV ranging from 100 to 1000 nanometer and formed by our body from the plasma membrane. So, their composition depends on the cell membrane, such as integrins and selectins. Last one, the optotic bodies, ABs. They are largest EVs ranging from 1 to 5 micrometer, and they are released during apoptosis through the outward plumbing of the membrane. So their cargo is quite different from others. They harbor um, cytoplasm, organelles, histones, and etc. The surge in exosome research followed their prominence in the 2013 Nobel Prize leading to the exponential growth in studies. However, the research is often hindered by challenges like um, inconsistent terminology and um, experimental artifacts. So to address this, the MISEV 2018 guidelines suggest that um, EV categorization should be based on the physical characteristics, service markers, cell condition or cell type. For example, small EV or high density EV, CD63 plus EV or hypoxic EVs. To avoid confusion, I will use the term EVs throughout this presentation. EV isolation is complex due to the contaminants in biological samples, like cell debris, protein aggregates, and lipoproteins, which overlap in size and density with EVs. 
For example, when isolating EVs more than 200 nanometer, albumin and lipoproteins are common contaminants. This is why choosing the right isolation technique is so important to ensure reliable downstream analysis and maintain EV functionality. There are many EV isolation techniques available, and each with its strengths and limitations. So today, we will discuss five commonly used methods, including ultracentrifugation, size exclusion chromatography, ultrafiltration, precipitation, and immunoaffinity. First, differential ultracentrifugation. UC or DUC. It is the most widely used method for EV purification. It separates particles by size and density using the stepwise increase in centrifugal force. And larger particles like cells, cell debris, and optotic bodies are removed first, then leaving EVs to form a pallet at the high speeds. The protocol of UC is simple and reagent-free, making it suitable for large sample volumes. However, it is very labor-intensive and time-consuming. Um, it often taking more than uh, four hours to finish the EV isolation. And EV might be damaged due to the high G forces affecting their biological functions. Besides, the co-precipitation is also a common issue that um, can separate similar sized contaminants like vesicles and proteins. Despite all this drawback, UC is still considered the gold standard for EV isolation because of its early development and standardized protocols. Next is the size exclusion chromatography, SEC also known as the gel filtration chromatography. SEC separates particles by size. A sample flows through a column filled with porous material. The smaller molecules enter the pore and taking longer and more complex path, which slows their elution. And on the other hand, large molecules cannot enter the pore and instead taking a short path, so it is faster. Compared to UC, SEC is easier, faster, and can be complete in 15 minutes using the commercial kit. And it also preserves the EV integrity and activity, making it suitable for scaling up. However, SEC cannot fully eliminate the contaminants of similar size. Therefore, SEC is ideal for improving EV purity and is often paired with other methods, such as ultrafiltration. Next one is precipitation. It uses the hydrophilic polymers like PEG to create a hydrophobic environment to reduce the EV solubility, then combine with low-speed centrifugation to precipitate EVs. Precipitation yields more EV than UC, and is user-friendly, cheap, and not very time consuming. Besides, it's scalable that accommodates sample volumes from like 100 microliter to several milliliters. However, co-precipitation of contaminants like uh, proteins and virus reduce EV purity. And the EV yield measured by total protein content has been argued to be overestimated. Additionally, separating polymers from EVs is challenging and may interfere with downstream applications. And the PEG isolated EVs have shown reduced cell viability compared to UC, indicating potential toxicity. Overall, precipitation is a simple and cost effective method that is um, ideal for preliminary studies. But um, maybe it's less suitable for therapeutic or functional applications. Next, we have immunoaffinity, IA. It uses antibodies to target the specific EV surface markers like 
CD9, CD63, and CD81. And these antibodies can be immobilized on the supports such as uh, microplates, columns, or magnetic beads. IA is highly specific, making it ideal for isolating specific EV subtypes such as CD63 plus EVs. And things um, there is no universal EV marker. IA cannot capture all EV in the samples, leading to lower yield. And besides, um, the high cost of antibody limits its scalability. Last one, ultra filtration, UF. UF separates particle by size using the membrane with defined pore size or molecular weight cutoff, MWCO. And two common setups are centrifugal spin filter and pressure driven stir cell. UF is a quick and straightforward method that can be used along or combined with other techniques to um, enhance the purity. However, UF has lower resolution than SEC, making it less effective at removing size identical contaminants. And membrane clogging is also a challenge which will reduce efficiency and increase the cost. An advanced form of UF is tangential flow filtration, also called TFF. It can minimize the clogging and offers improved scalability and um, reproducibility. So let's compare the conventional filtration with TFF. First, the dead end filtration on the left. It is used in centrifugal spin filter and stir cell. The sample flows vertically to the membrane, and large particles accumulated on the membrane and forming a cack layer. The cup cack layer grows over time, and the flow rate and efficiency decreases. Now, let's move to the right, tangential flow filtration, TFF, also known as the cross flow filtration. The sample flows parallel to the membrane and allowing the smaller molecule pass through the membrane while large molecules are recirculated and continuously flushing the membrane. Hence, TFF minimizes the membrane clogging, maintaining a steady flow rate, which is ideal for scalable application. This diagram summarizes the performance of five common EV isolation methods. So we can see that um, currently no single method provides both high yard and high purity. Therefore, many studies suggest to combine techniques such as TFF with SEC to get better results. And um, the MISEV 2018 guidelines highlights the concern about using introduced components like the antibodies in immunoaffinities and the polymers in precipitation because they may interfere with the downstream applications. And this further emphasizes the utility of TFF. Since UC is the most commonly used method for isolating EVs from biological fluids, so let's now compare its efficiency with TFF. This study compares UC and TFF for isolating EVs from breast cancer cell culture media. Um, when compared to UC, TFF recover 100 times more EV per medium cells and 5 times more EV per 100 ml of media. Then EV from both methods shows the similar size, but TFF profile display less discrete pit, peak and greater consistency across the replicates, indicating there's a higher reproducibility. The TEM image reveals that EV isolated from both methods um, were spherical and consistent with the yield data. More EV were observed in TFF samples. Furthermore, Spiking samples with non-amounts of albumin to test the ability 
of removing contaminants. And the results demonstrate that TFF's ability to remove 40 times more albumin than UC, while UC still retained a large amount of albumin. And further studies use four techniques, PTA, DLS, NanoFCN, and TRPS to assess the EVs isolated from two cell types, CEV and DEV. We can see that the size distributions were consistent in each technique, but varies between different techniques. And notably, DLS results shows larger EV size for UC compared to TFF. And it is likely due to the aggregate formation during the ultra centrifugation. The concentration results were similar between TFF and UC. However, the nano FCM indicates that um, the concentration of TFF isolated DEV is 100 times higher per meal than UC. The mass of EV was quantified to explore the potential difference in cargo content. And the UC isolated EV shows higher dry mass than TFF, suggesting the presence of aggregates and consistent with the DOS findings. The difference in EV dry mass suggests the variation in molecular composition. And to assess this, the service marker and the total nucleic acid are further evaluated. EV from both methods contain key markers of CD9, CD63, and CT81. But marker levels vary, indicating that um, different EV subpopulations were isolated by each method. And TFF isolated EV shows 7 to 22 times higher nucleic acid content than UC. And since nano FCM cannot effectively distinguish large EVs from small EV aggregates, the AFM was used to analyze the individual EV. The AFM image confirms the spherical EVs from both methods with size ranging from 20 to 300 nanometer. And the AFM IR spectra shows that the TFF isolated EV marked in blue retains normal structure for protein, nucleic acid, and lipids, whereas UC isolated EV shows peak change, indicating that structure alterations and reduce nucleic acid content consistent with nano FCM findings. A previous study shows that EV composition may influence the interaction with cell membrane, internalization, and biological effects. Thus, a sedimentation test is used to assess the ability of EV to move toward the cell. Overall, the sedimentation rate of UC isolated EV was 65 to 100 times higher than TFF isolated EVs. And the uptake dynamics shows that TFF isolated EV distributed evenly and uniformly in the cytoplasm. And in contrast, UC isolated EVs were aggregates with various sizes in order to assess the um, biological effects, EV from both methods were tested in a scratch wood assay. The LPS was used to induce the inflammation, and different EV concentrations were applied to evaluate the ability of wood healing. We can see that um, EV from both methods enhanced the wood closure compared to the LPS-only control. However, the UC isolated DEV shows adverse effect at higher doses. So, in summary, um, these studies demonstrate that the EV size from TFF and UC are identical. However, TFF outperforms UC in yield, reproducibility, and contaminant removal. 
It even saves over 40% of processing time, making it ideal for large-scale applications. Moreover, TFF preserves EV integrity, including like higher nucleic acid content, normal molecular structures, and it also performs better in downstream applications like internalization and biological assays. So above results solidify TFF's rule as the preferred method. Therefore, TFF has been increasingly adopted in recent years due to its many benefits. When paired with SEC, it further improved the EV purity. So together, TFF and SEC are gaining the recognition as the new gold standard for EV isolation. Based on the TFF strength, Rocker developed 10 100 an all-in-one TFF system to simplify the process. Tenfield 100 integrates TFF technology into a simple and all-in-one system. Just choose a suitable capsule, connecting all components together, and then it's ready to use. Besides, the system performs concentration, purification, and filtration simultaneously in a single setup, enhancing the efficiency. Compared to dead end filtration, TFF reduce membrane falling, and the membrane are easy to clean and reuse. In addition to the key feature mentioned, Tenfield 100 is highly adaptable. By changing the adapters, it's compatible with capsules and cartridge from multiple brands, such as Hensha Baumat, Paul, Satori's and making it incredibly flexible for various applications. The Tenfield system consists of a peristaltic pump for liquid transfer, a TFF cartridge to separate molecules by size, pressure gauges for monitoring conditions, then connecting tubes and clamps for a complete setup. The sample is first loaded into reservoir and then pushed into the cartridge by pump. The molecules smaller than the membrane pore marked in green will pass through a filtrate or permeate, while large molecules marked in blue are recirculated to reservoir for concentration. TFF offers versatility across various EV workflows, such as concentration of um, dilute samples like cell culture median and urine or buffer exchange. As for isolation, TFF can be used either as the single method like uh, removing the EVs from FPS or combined with other techniques like SEC. Here are some case studies shows that um, TFF is widely used for EV concentration and isolation, and it is often combined with techniques like SEC, UC, or LSC. The sample types include not only cell culture medium, but biological fluids like urine, lipoaspirates, and juice. The capsules and cartridge details from various studies are listed here for reference. So here, here, I have just finished my presentation. So let's now move to the Q&A session. I will take up to three questions. First question, how long can capsules or cartridges be reused? Mm, actually, the efficacy of membrane is evaluated using the normalized water permeability test, the NWP test and it measures water flow at the first usage and after cleaning to assess the membrane clogging. The more clogged the membrane, the slower the flow rate. So if the recovery rate falls below 75%, then an additional cleaning is recommended. Then if it drops below 50%, then a replacement is advised. Okay, second question is, 
Can a temporal system or a cartridge be autoclaved? And how to ensure the sterility of cartridge when reusing it? And this is really a good question. Uh, TFF capsules from Paul and Henshaw Biomed come in sterile packaging, but Tenfield itself is not sterile. And since the capsules and the cartridge are not autoclavable, a chemical sterilization is recommended. Um, we can use the cleaning solution like the sodium hydroxide to sterilize the weighted parts and then follow by through breathing with pure water. And after this process, this system is ready for the next round. Okay, the last question. Um, can Tenfield 100 support a large cartridge or cassette holder? Um, actually, the Tenfield 100 is specifically designed for lab scale application with only 500 mil capacity. However, it can still accommodate large hollow fiber cartridge if other adapters and an additional holders are used to support the cartridge. And here are examples showing that large cartridge are installed with the Tempio system to show its adaptability. Okay, thank you for your attention. In conclusion, um, Tempio system offers an intuitive and efficient solutions for EV isolation. And if you have further questions or feedback, please feel free to share them by scanning the QR code located in the bottom right corner. And now let's conclude with the introduction video for Tempio 100. Thank you. Tenfil 100 Tangential Flow Filtration System is mainly used for the purification and separation of biomolecules, such as DNA, RNA, proteins, etc. As compared to traditional dead-end filtration, TFF method reduces membrane fouling. It also concentrates, purifies, and defilters at the same time. It speeds up and simplifies the process. In dead-end filtration, the sample stream flows vertically through the membrane. In this way, macromolecules can easily get accumulated on membrane surface and eventually lower the flow rate. With tangential flow filtration, the sample flows horizontally on the membrane surface. While small molecules pass through the membrane vertically, the remainings are continuously circulated, filtered, and flushed through the membrane, which effectively prevent molecules from accumulating on the membrane surface. It maintains the flow rate, and does concentration and defiltration simultaneously. Tanfill 100 is an easy-to-use system combined with pump, reservoir, and pressure gauges. Simply plug, load the samples and start. Tanfill 100 can be installed with different tangential flow filtration membranes, including hollow fiber, flat plate, and spiral wound, suitable for microfiltration and ultrafiltration technology. It uses peristaltic pump rather than diaphragm pump to increase the service life. Parameters in Tanfill 100 include Speed Time And Rotation Direction It's also built in with Quick Clean Mode for cleaning the tubes after use. Use it with continuous defiltration can maintain concentration without manually adding buffer. It's milder to biomolecules, less likely to damage the structure, and easier to automate. Use Tanfill 100 on purification, concentration, and defiltration of proteins, peptides, nucleic acids, extracellular vesicles, antibodies, enzymes, vaccines.